are listening to Black to Black. Information is power. You are listening to Black to Black. listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Now let's get back to Black to Black with Information Man. Hi everybody, this is Information Man, this is Black to Black, welcome. Um, earlier down the line, let me fix my volumes here folks, I uh, said that I would be doing a series like this, Black to Black AM I called it, where I would talk about unusual subject matters, and I've decided to go back into the laboratory and revamp a few things, so this will be the new look for the show, new style. Uh, I'm trying some new things here. I will be doing the things that you you have seen me do in the past, interviews, uh, different videos with different looks. But particularly for this, when you see black, black to black, this will be the look and the sound that you will get from the program. Now, as for the music, I will be ripping the music big time. Hear that? To black, to black. Okay, so that music that you hear me ripping and you will be hearing throughout my programs, that music is produced by yours truly. Uh, you know how YouTube is, they, they give you copyright. So I've decided to use my resources to produce my own beats and sounds and use various means to produce nice productions like that. So music will be a big part of the production. Black. Black to black. Yeah, black to black. Okay, let me in there and get right into this video. I want to thank everybody out there who's watching the video. Uh, let me go right ahead again. I need folks to go ahead and support the channel. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Okay. So thank you again. I'm going to get right into the point. And everybody out there in the chat room, everyone that's been supporting me in the program, thank you a million. So what I want to get into right now, uh, there's been a lot of conversations on various YouTube channels, various conversations in magazines, articles, news, uh, podcasts all over the world about the future. And what does the future hold? As it relates to automation, uh, you have self-driven cars, self-driven trucks. Uh, a lot of folks have been talking about that. And the one thing that holds us back from that reality is that yeah, you can create self-driven cars, but you need to have infrastructure for those cars to be able to move on the road. And the question is, do we have that at this point in time and how far are we from that? But I do have some disturbing news, explosive news that I'm going to share with the family right now uh, on this program. I'm going to be a little bit more raw about things, damn it. And um, there's an article. There's been a study. I believe at Georgia Tech University. This is a very unfortunate study. This is why this is black to black. This is about cars that can't recognize pedestrians. 
Are you ready for it? Should I give you a drum line? Should I get ready for the almighty clap? And that is that these cars for the future, cars that are self-driven, they're having a hard time with the AI because the, the, car, the cars cannot recognize pedestrians with dark skin tones. You heard it from me. So basically, black people, melanated people, will have a high risk of being hit by one of these self-driven cars or animated AI, artificial AI to tell the car what to do. The AI, for some reason, can't recognize black people, dark mattered people. Now, you would say, oh, they can't recognize black people in the dark. Well, the study also confirmed that even in broad daylight, they've done tests the cars can't recognize melanated people. Is this because animating cars is not a natural thing to the order? What is it? Is this what you would call technical, tech, um, industrial racism, uh, scientific racism? What could it be? We're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about it right now. Let me go over here and go further into this article. What it's about. And uh, bear with me as I look, turn, and everything like that, everybody. Once again, let me, let's me let go into this. A new report shows, let me get this over here. Thank you, everybody. A new report shows that the system designed to help self-driven cars, and uh, it, cars with AI, cars recognition, recognition pedestrians, may have trouble recognizing people with dark skin tones. The worry... The worrying research has been uploaded to pre-print ser servers. So they've been using computer databases to get uh, this, this information as to what's going on and how to configure these cars to be able to recognize people. Because the whole idea behind self-driven cars is that you want to give a car's ability to recognize uh, obstacles, recognize people, when to stop, when to go. Uh, you want to have complete safety mechanisms in cars like this. Now, this is what it's about. Bias. Is there a bias in artificial intelligence which requires discipline and compression? Let's get into it. Evidence already exists that some facial recognition software struggles to work with dark skin tones. But the results of the study into self-driven cars, animation, uh, AI, has a potential for deadly outcomes. And those deadly I out out outcomes, folks, excuse me, is that I, you, and the darker that you are, the more you are at risk to be hit by such vehicles if they were ever to be put on the road. And this stuff is in studies, it's in development, and they're finding there are some problems. World best show bias. Let's, let's go here with this title. Research from Georgia Tech, as I had mentioned earlier, investigated eight AI models used in the state of the arts objective detection systems to complete their study. These systems allow automated running on auto cars that run by themselves okay vehicles to be able to recognize road signs so when you have these self-driven cars you want them to be able to have sensors to recognize everything around them okay but the problem is they're recognizing signs but they're not recognizing what we would call black people us black to black okay now this is the deal the vehicles are not recognized, they're recognizing road signs, but pedestrians and other objects as they navigate the road. So the goal is, once again, is that you want these type of cars to be able to navigate, recognize signs on the road, recognize when to stop, recognize pedestrians on the road. 
They tested, let me say, let me let you know what they tested here. They tested these systems using two different categories based on the Fitzpatrick scale. Fitzpatrick scale, a scale commonly used to classify human skin color. You understand me? You understand what I'm saying to you? This is very important that you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth because this is the study that they use. Okay. Tell the truth. Okay. Now, as we go further, these tests, these systems use different categories based on the Fitzpatrick scale, a scale commonly used to classify human skin color. I had to say that again to emphasize where this is going. Because this is black to black. Okay. That's definitely what it is. You are listening to Black to Black. Dark skin at higher risk. That's us, black people, melanated people. We're at higher risk with these type of vehicles being on the road at some point in time. Or in hell, they're ready to go right now. Okay. Overall, the accuracy of the system decreased by 5% when it was presented. So this is part of their test. When they were testing... Uh, these cars and their ability to figure out facial or skin recognition and overall the accuracy of the system decreased by 5% when it was present when it was presented let me correct that when it was presented with groups of images of pedestrians with darker skin tones so basically in a nutshell the accuracy went dipped down to 5% when these cars were programmed to recognize people pedestrians and they just cannot recognize black people, people that are colored, that are darker skin. They, they're having a hard time. And that puts us at risk when vehicles like this are on the road. It has a big time uh, risk factors. OK, now, like I said before, they use a image of pedestrians with darker skin tones. And accurate and, and according to the published paper. The model shown unfamiliar, poorly performance when confronted with pedestrians with three darkest shades on the scale of recognizing color. Okay? That is the truth. Tell the truth. Now. Let's get into this. Furthermore, furthermore, let's get into it. This is um, it's a damn shame um, <laughs> when you think about it. Uh, these technologies uh, won't recognize us black people. I guess they figure that we won't be a part of the future. It makes you wonder about that. So, on the darker side of the, sh of the scale, it still could not recognize an image of skin tone that is black. Let's move it on further. Now, these results came after the outcome is adjusted to take into consideration whether the photo was taken during the day or at night. In summary, the report suggests that people with darker skin tones will be less safe near roads dominated by cars that operate on a self-driven technology and AI of this type than those with lighter skin. So if you are a lighter skinned person or Caucasian person, someone of that of that ilk, you won't have any problems with these type of vehicles on the road someday uh, being able to recognize you. Or if they're on the road right now, they will be able to recognize you. You won't have you won't you're not at risk. If you are a black person, highly melanated person, you are at risk. It's just that simple. The report suggests that people with darker skin tones will be less safe 
near roads dominated by these automated type of cars and vehicles that run on artificial intelligence that are self-driven than, than those with lighter skin. Okay. Now, ask yourself, is there a bias? Bias elimination starts with diversity in research. Is there a bias in science? Does science, does this society, does the reality that we're living in as black people in America, does it mean that who we are does not matter for the future? Do they not count us in? As far as I'm concerned, when you looked at TV shows like Star Trek and you had that group that called themselves the Cleons, as far as I'm concerned, the Cleons were black people in the future. You better believe that because that's the fact. You are listening to Black to Black. And so does this, is there bias in these research reports? Is there bias in science as they, when they create things, do they use certain racial bias against black people uh, that we're not included in the future? And why is it that this AI that they're struggling with can't recognize highly melanated people you would think that these that, that they would be it would be easier to be able to recognize a darker skinned person versus a lighter. But I'm going to move on. It's just a thought that comes to my mind. The report, thankfully, gives a brief outline how to render this unfavorable reality, this unfavorable reality to as it relates to us. This starts with simply increasing the number of images of dark skin pedestrians in the data set used to train the system. Engineers responsible for development of these systems need to place more emphasis on training the system with higher accuracy for the group, for this group which is us, black people. They've got to train and calibrate and move those machines to recognize black people. Information is power. Okay. The report which the author says they hope gives enough compelling evidence to address this critical issue before deploying these recognition systems into the world is another reminder of the generation of diversity in the AI world. Unfortunately, this isn't the first report of potential deadly racism in AI powered systems in this country or world. You are listening to Black to Black. You're listening to Black to Black, that's for sure. Information yes, let's get back to it now. Uh, as I said in the statement that I said a few minutes ago, um, this is a dangerous scenario if there ever was. Uh, like I said, they, they want to deploy these type of technologies into these vehicles and darker skinned people, melanated people, black people, we would be the we are the ones currently right now at risk. 
It said in the report that they've got to calibrate this. They got to do more studies. They got to do things to make AI recognize black people. I think that's dangerous, actually, because they also talk about making robots and things of this nature. And the question is, um, there's people who talk about, uh, and I know there's people that disagree with this. Will robots replace physical human beings when it comes to policing? Okay. Now you all grew up. I know I grew up watching RoboCop. Some of you out there that are younger than millennials, you probably won't remember RoboCop as I will. But the question is, if this AI, if there is bias, racial bias in AI and diversity and research, can such mechanisms for the future uh, be um, against black people if these racial biases in technology actually exist, unless I'm just, uh, you know, being paranoid and all that sort of stuff, you know, what do y'all think out there? Give your opinions, make sure you comment on this video as well as I go back into the presentation. Now, let me go further here by letting you know that unfortunately, this isn't the first report of potential deadly racism in AI powered systems. In May last year, pro, uh, publican, pro publican reported that software used to assist judges in determining the risk mm, posed of uh, recommitting a crime was biased against black people. So there's a there's a publication called Pro Publico that reported that their software used to assist judges in determining the risk of a perpetrator or, or someone who committed a crime to determine whether you want to give them a parole date, determine what your sentence is for them, that it was completely biased. The AI was completely biased and it posted recommitting a crime was biased against black people. So there's something going on here when it comes to, I never thought, you know, sometimes some of you would say, oh, this is crazy. You're making it. This is why this is the black to black show. I'm going to be doing stuff that's unusual, stuff that's going to make you scratch your head and take a double take. Going to be dealing with stuff that goes bump in the night, you know, shit like that. <laughs> And that's just how it's going to be with this pro, with this series that I'll be doing in the fashion that I'm doing it right now. OK, so it seems to me or not seems to me there is evidence out there that the AI, the technology, the research, all this futuristic stuff that may be coming down the pipeline is already layered with racial bias, possibly. OK, and. Let's just keep this in mind. This is another reason why we need more of our people to go into science, biology, computer, computer technology, research. And I do mean research. Uh, we need to be involved in these areas big time so that someone else doesn't create something that can be a danger to us. Now, Talking about racial profiling is lethal. Let's go. This gets back to what I just talked about. This gets into technology. The system is used by judges in criminal sentencing. So this technology that judges are using, is, as I said before, it assists them in carrying out their sentences. Okay. It is providing a score based on whether the person is likely to re-offend. A high score suggests they will re-offend. A low score suggests it is less likely. The investigation, now investigative journalists um, assess the risk score assigned to more than 7,000 people in Broward County in Florida this was back in 2013 and 14. And then they watched to see, okay, this is very interesting. They watched 
to see if the same people, listen to me, folks, the same people were charged with any new crimes in the next two years. Okay? This is important stuff. You are listening to Black to Black. Okay? Now, not only did it prove to be unreliable and 20% of the people predicted to commit violent crimes did so, it was also racially biased. So there is a racial bias in science and research, and AI technology. Black defenders were more likely to be flagged as future criminals, wrongly labeling them at almost twice the rate of, of their white counterparts, folks. Mm. While white defendants were misled, mislabeled as low risk more often than black defendants. Now, the reason why I want to say this, remember that movie with uh, Tom Cruise called Minority Report, Minority Report, where basically it was a, 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 it was a movie based in the future where uh, they could predict whether you were going to do a crime before you actually did it. So they had uh, these uh, pre-clogs, these young ladies that were, uh, they were psychic. They were, had them captured laying in a pool of water and they could... Uh, since what was going to happen, they could predict the future. And they used these these women, these twins, um, these triplets to determine crime. So they could say, they could bust in your house and arrest you and say, uh, you are arrested uh, uh, because on April 22nd, 2019, <laughs> you're going to commit a crime in which you're going to do something to somebody. And now we nabbed your ass right now. That's AI. They were using AI in that movie. A lot of what was in Minority Report uh, is realistic, in my opinion, because it could happen today, it could happen tomorrow, because this is another example where they're using uh, AI technology to determine who's going to get parole, who's going to re-offend, who's not going to re-offend. And as I read and said to you, black men, black people tend to be, there's a bias against us, and we are the ones at higher risk to be seen as of, uh, to reoffend, and that's not true. It's actually white men, but they're getting lower scores in this area based on this these AIs, which are bias. Talk about the talk about the damn future. Why don't we? You are listening to Black to Black. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Yes, make sure you subscribe. As I said, 20% of the people predicted to commit violent crimes did so. It was also racially biased. Moving on. The AI development community must take some responsibility, must work together to take a public stand against this sort of massively damaging bias AI technological systems that can be used to so isn't this a isn't this a trip we already as black males and black people we're already racially profiled whether we're driving a car riding a bike a barbecuing as you had the situation in Oakland California no matter what we do if we're walking we're being harassed I mean, there's been instances where you're walking a neighborhood, you're being harassed. When I went to go see my uncle once, I told this story before, I was harassed by the police just walking to my uncle's house and walking up to his, you know, he had one of those row houses in Baltimore, and I was kicking it on his patio, and the police come up, and they try to say that I did something that I didn't do. I pulled out my ID. Unfortunately, I had to contract with them through the ID. You know, that's why when you when you get an ID, you're contracting with them. That's why they always ask you for your ID, because you're giving them permission to do what they're going to do to you. Look it up. And so, 
we always face this as black people, uh, this sort of bias towards us. And it pre and so those who are biased towards us, who work in technology, would make us think, and would make me think, that they wouldn't be biased towards us in the technology that they create when they don't see us as a part of this world. See, black folks in America or around the world, we are those Cleons on Star Trek, the rebel Cleons who Captain Kirk and all the rest of them just didn't like and they were trying to get a handle on them. Black people, we are those Cleons. Okay? And we've got to be aware of even in technology, there are racial biases. And there's some out there that won't believe what I just read. And if you don't think what I said is the truth, all you got to do is go online for yourself. Look up the Georgia Tech study on self-driven cars and how there is a racial bias and a danger that it poses to darker skinned people, melanated people walking on this earth and how it could be a risk for us going forward in this world. Now you tell me if I'm not telling the truth, then what am I doing? Tell the truth. Because, you know, information is power. It's what we need to do always. Information is power. I want to let you all know, too, that I will be getting into some very unusual subject matters with this series. I, I'm i going to I'm going to go over some, let me just say it like this. I'm going to talk about the Illuminati. Is it real? Does it exist? Is it a figment of our imagination? Do we give it more power than it really has? So I want to preface that because I also am going to get into other material that sort of pushes these New World Order or um, Illuminati type of theories. You've got the Committee of 300. I'll be getting into that. You've got the 25-point plan of world domination. Brother Infoman will be getting into that. Subject matters and many, many more. Um, are cell phones uh, creating mind control? Because, as I said before, just like television, cell phones get us out of beta waves into alpha waves, which kind of uh, sedates us, relaxes us, uh, pacifies us from using our intellectual brain. And that's sort of, let me just also bring up to you that when you are trying to relax and you're listening to soothing music, the reason why you're able to relax when you're listening to very quiet and soothing music is because it's putting your brain in the state of alpha waves, pacifying you, slowing you down, okay? Uh, when, you're in stem, when you're getting involved in, in, in academic discussions, academic reading, anything like that, you're thinking, you're processing, you're thinking critical. That's your brain is working in the beta state. So, you know, critical thinking is very important. Is you're listening to your listening critical thinking is very important. Uh, you must look at everything from both sides of the coin, left, right, every side of the coin. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I was told a long time ago, never believe everything that you read. Do your thorough investi your thorough investigation, okay, to make up uh, to make to create come to facts that are based in empirical data or evidence. Now we are entitled to our opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. Facts must be backed up by certain empirical data. Very important. Everybody out there that's watching the program, once again, let me give you a most important clap because you are what makes this program go now. Black to black. You are listening to Black to Black. I want to give a shout out to the Black Brain Trust. Yes, you must check out the Black Brain Trust. They've got a bad outfit over there. 
those brothers get into black into a uh, blockchain bitcoin science space stuff like this ai artificial intelligence robots mm. Mm. business computers yes black to black black to black black to black Thank you for being here with me. You are listening to Black to Black. You are listening to Black to Black. We're living our break our ass into the body and you're all making me me. Bam! Black to Black. Thank you, everybody. I'll be back with this format. I hope y'all like it. Black to black. You are listening to Black to Black. Yes. Woo. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. I hope y'all like the music. Peace to everybody. Peace to everybody in the chat room. Everybody that liked the video. Make sure you, sh you share the video. If you're new to the channel, you know what to do. Follow the channel. Yeah. Black to black. That's right. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good evening, night, wherever you are, or morning, or day. <laughs>